Hello there. This lecture is all about time series data and how time series data can be used to calculate index numbers that are then used to compare values across time. So this lecture is going to cover simple index numbers, which is just assessing differences or changes in values for a single item across time. And then the bulk of this lecture will be focused on weighted aggregate index price numbers, such as the Lasper index, the Posh index, and the Fisher index. And the Lasper and the Posh index are used to figure out variations in price and quantity using quantities across time, so for multiple items. And then the Fisher index takes both of those, and kind of finds a middle ground between the two. Then the deflation formula uses an index number to figure out how much a value in the past would be worth today. So what is an index number? Well, index numbers are used for time series data analysis, and it's all about using that historical time series data to accurately compare monetary values across time. And most comparisons are on a yearly basis. So you could answer questions such as, how much has the cost of living changed since 2005? Or is my raise comparable to the cost of living increase? Those types of questions require more sophisticated index numbers than the simple index number, which again, you're just looking at the change in value for a single item across time. But the cost of living and inflation, of course, is based on more than just a single item. So that's what the weighted aggregate price index numbers get at that I'll get to soon. So the simple index number, I have the formula for that right here. And I wrote it in symbols and in words. So I, with the subscript T, just represents the simple index number for the time period of interest. So T represents time period of interest. So that equals Y. Y stands for value. If it has a subscript T, that means it's the value of that item at the time of interest. If it has a subscript of zero, that means that it's the value at the base period. So all fluctuations are compared to a base period index. And the base period is just the reference point for all index numbers. So the base period could be meaningful. So maybe it's when the stock market crashed or when the recession started to occur. Or the base period could be based on convenience. So maybe your just base period is just based on the earliest point that you have data available. Now the index number for the base period is always 100 because you take the value at the time of interest, divide by the value at the base period, multiply it by 100. So if you have the value at the time of interest and the value at the base period and you're looking at the base period as your time of interest, you'll have the same value over itself, that'll equal 1, anything divided by itself is 1, multiply that by 100 and you'll have an index number of 100 for that base period. So again, all index numbers are compared to the base period. But to compare other indexes for other time periods, you just take the index number for the later time period, subtract by the index number for the earlier time period that you're comparing it to, and then divide that by the earlier index number. Then you take all of that and you multiply it by 100. And I'll show you examples of all of this. So here's an example of simple index numbers. So remember, the index number for the time period of interest is equal to the value at the time of interest divided by the value at the base period. And let's go ahead and say that our base period for this data is the year 2004. So that is our base period. And the price of gas in 2004, the mean price of gas, was $1.90. So the value in our denominator is going to be 190 for all of our calculations. Because remember, the value at the base period, this little y0, is the denominator in the fraction when we're looking at simple index numbers. Then the numerator is just the value at the time of interest, and then you take that, divided by that, multiply by 100. So you have the price of gas across all the years in your data set. And to find the index number, you take the price of gas at that particular year, divide it by the price of gas for the base period, and then multiply that by 100. And you can see I've done that across all these numbers. So in 2005, gas cost $2.60 on average a gallon. 
So 260, value at the time of interest, divided by 190, value at the time of the base period, 2004, gives you 1.368, multiply that by 100, and you get an index number of 136.8. So now I strongly encourage you to pause this lecture and try to find the simple index number for the price of gas for 2012, 2013, and 2014 using these values as an example. So again, you just take the value at the, price, the time of interest divided by the value at the base period and multiply by 100. So pause this now and give it a shot. So now check your work. So for 2012, the average cost, the mean cost of gas was 350. 3.5 divided by the cost of gas at the base period, 190, gives you 1.842. Multiply that by 100, and you get 184.2. So you filled in those blanks. So what we can say by looking at this is that the price of gas in 2005 was 136.8% of the price of gas in 2004. The price of gas, for instance, in 2008 was 200% of the price of gas in 2004. And I'll drill down into these numbers a little bit more here in a minute. So remember I said that all values, all index numbers are based on the base period. But what if you want to compare values across time and the base period isn't one of the values that you're interested in comparing? Well, keep in mind that in most cases, index numbers are presented without the values used to calculate them. So you'll see here in this table, you don't have the original values that were used to calculate the index numbers. That's usually the case. So it's important for you to be able to interpret index numbers alone. So if we look at this and we want to compare 2013 to 2008, Remember, 2004 was the base period. So if we look at the value for 2013, that's comparing the price of gas to 2004. If we look at the index number for 2008, that's also comparing gas prices to 2004. So the way that we can compare 2013 to 2008 is to use that formula that I showed you earlier, comparing index numbers when one of those index numbers isn't from the base period. So in this case, the later index is going to come from the later time, which is 2013. The index number in 2013 was 179. So the later index is 179. The earlier index from the earlier time of 2008 was 200. So you replace earlier index with the value of 200. So when you take 179 minus 200, you get negative 21. Divide that by 200 and you get negative 0.105. Then you take that negative 0.105, multiply it by 100, you end up with negative 10.5, or you can say a 10.5% decrease. So if we want to know the rate of change in gas price in 2013 compared to 2008, it decreased by 10.5%. So now I want you to give it a shot. If you want to compare the rate of change in the gas price for 2014 compared to 2008, use the index numbers to do that. So go ahead and pause this video, try that out, and then the next slide I'll show you the answer. All right, so in this case, the later index is coming from 2014. That index is 193.2. And our earlier index hasn't changed because we are still comparing it to 2008. So you've got your 200s there from 2008. And you solve for that by doing one step at a time. So first you'll want to do the subtraction. So 193.2 minus 200. That gives you negative 6.8. Then divide that by 200. You get negative 0 0.034. Then finally you do your multiplication. So you multiply at that value by 100. You get negative 3.4%. So you know that there was a 3.4% decrease in gas prices from 2008 to 2014. Now, sometimes you will only have information about the values for the base period. And there are many questions that you can answer using the base period values and the index numbers. 
So for example, let's say we know that the mean gas price in 2004 was $1.90. And let's pretend that we don't know any of the values for any of the other years. Even though you saw it earlier in the table, again, typically the information is just presented with the year and the index number. So what we can see, and I already said this before, but looking at the index number, we know that gas prices in 2008 are 200% of gas prices in 2004. Remember, we're comparing it to our base period of 2004. So now we can say, well, how much more in terms of percent does gas cost in 2008 compared to 2004? So to find that, you take the index number for the time period of interest, in this case 2008, and you might subtract 100. So the index period, for, the index number for the time of interest was 200, and 200 minus 100, we know it's 100% more. Then we can say, all right, how much more in terms of dollar amount or value does gas cost in 2008 compared to 2004. So you take the percent change, so the index number for the time period of interest minus 100, and you divide that by 100, and then you multiply that by the value at the time period of interest. So the time of interest is 2008, the index number for 2008 is 200. 200 minus 100 gives you 100. 100 minus 100 gives you 1, then 1 times 190, you know that gas was $1.90 more. So up here, we know that the gas price doubled, essentially, it's 100% more. And here, we can see that, yeah, it doubled, it's doubled the price, it's $1.90 more than it was in 2004. Now we can look at how do we know what the mean price of gas is in 2008 based on the index number for 2008 and the value of gas in 2004? So to find the value at the time of interest, or in other words, finding y, t, remember y represents value, t represents time of interest, you take the value at the base period, and then you multiply that by the index number for the time period of interest divided by 100. So we're still interested in 2008, and the value at the base period, we know that's $1.90, so 1.90 goes here for Y0. 200 is the index number for the time of interest, divided by 100. We end up with 190 times 2, 200 divided by 100 is 2. And gas in, the mean price of gas in 2008 was $3.80. And in fact, $3.80 is $1.90 more than the price of gas in 2004, which was $1.90. But you could simply just, you know, add $1.90 to $1.90 because you know that it was $1.90 in 2004 and it's $1.90 more in 2008. But you may want to jump right to the mean price without first calculating the value change. So it's important to know this formula. Now we can confirm that this is correct by going back to that table where we did have all of those values. And check it out. The price of gas in 2008 was $3.80. But again, typically you will not know all of this information when you're looking at tables that are presenting index numbers. So now I want you to pause this video and give it a try. So figure out all of the same things that we figured out before, only now you're interested in 2014. So that is your time period of interest. Okay, so hopefully you paused it and worked through it and tried to figure it out. And now let's look at the answers. So how much more in terms of percent? Well, actually, gas prices in 2014 are 193.2% .2 of gas prices in 2004. That is what the index number tells you. It tells you the percentage of the price compared to the base period. Now we want to figure out how much more in terms of percent does gas cost in 2014 compared to 2004? Well, you take the index number for the time of interest. So 2014 is our time period of interest. The index number is 193.2 minus 100. Gas is 93.2% more in 2014 than it was in 2004. Now let's look at how much more in terms of price, not percent, does gas cost in 2014 compared to 2004? So you take that index number from the time period of interest, time period of interest to 2014, index number is 193.2, minus 100, 
so that gives you 93.2. Then you divide that by 100, you get 0.932. Multiply it by the value at the time of interest, or sorry, the value at the base period, which is $1.90. So 0.932 times 1.9 gives you 1.771. If you convert that into dollars, which we typically round to the hundredths place there, you could say gas is $1.77 more in 2014 than it was in 2004. Now if you want to figure out what is the mean price of gas in 2014 based on the index number for 2014 and the value of gas at the base period 2004 which was $1.90 then you just use this formula. So the value at the base period was $1.90 multiplied by the index number for the time period of interest 193.2 in 2014 divided by 100. So this 193.2 divided by 100 becomes 1.932. We take that, multiply by 190 or 1.90, and we get $3.67 essentially. So we can confirm that by going back to that table where we did have the values. And in fact, the price of gas in 2014 was 367. All right. So now let's focus our attention on weighted aggregate price index numbers. And this is again all about looking at the fluctuation in the price of items that have varying quantities and prices across time. So we're no longer just looking at a single item, we're looking at multiple items which has a price and a quantity that changes across time. So a very simple aggregate price index, you can just add all the values up for the time of interest, divide by the total cost of all of those items at the base period, and then multiply it by 100. But I'm not even going to cover this because it's extremely rare that you're going to have the same price, or I'm sorry, the same quantities of items across time. There's typically fluctuations in consumption or quantities based on the prices. So I'm not going to cover this one. I'm going to focus on weighted aggregate price indexes. Weighted getting at the fact that there are different quantities in the items across time. So the weighted aggregate price index includes the Lesperre and the Pash index. And that's when you examine prices of groups of items across time based on differences in both price and quantity. So for example, the number of units at each cost. Um, so interest rates on different types of loans that are more or less frequent over time. Or maybe you could look at the percentage of workforce and respective pay rates as well. So those are just examples of things that change in price and quantity. So this is often used to examine the rate of change in the cost of living. Because with the cost of living, it includes tons of different items that people are purchasing to live. And the quantities change and the values change across time. So the Lesperre index is the most common weighted aggregate price index and it is the basis for the consumer price index. So if you've ever seen the CPI, it's the primary measure of inflation and usually the Lesperre index is what's used to calculate the CPI. Now if you're interested in looking at inflation beyond this lecture, you can go ahead and jump online and Google or Bing or search in any way that you search for the CPI calculator and you can type in values and compare what that value would be worth across different time periods. So it's kind of interesting to do. So just like the simple index number, everything is based on the base period. So the prices that you use to calculate these values are based on the base period level or in other words the weight or the quantity at the base period so how much were we using at the base period so if you look at the formula here I'll break it down for you this represents the sum of the quantity of each item that you're looking at at the base period times the price at the time of interest divided by the sum of the quantity of each item at the base period times the price at the base period. Then you take all those, add them together, then divide and multiply by 100. So if you're looking at three items, for instance, you'll have the quantity of item one at the base period times the price of item one at the time period of interest plus the quantity of item two at the base period multiplied by the price of item two at the time period of interest plus 
the quantity of item 3 at the base period times the price of item 3 at the time period of interest. That'll all be in your numerator. Then you'll be dividing by the quantity of item 1 at the base period times the price of item 1 at the base period plus the quantity of item 2 at the base period times the price of item 2 at the base, base period plus the quantity of item 3 at the base period plus the price of item 3 at the base period. And then you'll add all those together. You'll divide the numerator by the denominator and multiply by 100. And I will show you an example of this. And trust me, the way that I show you the due to calculations will make your life a lot easier when it comes to calculating these things. Putting it in a table is the best way to go. So the Lisbert index helps give you an idea of what yesterday's basket or yesterday's bundle of goods will cost at today's prices. Now if you have a Lisbert index of 100, that means that the price of the bundle of items in the base period is the equivalent to the time of interest. So in other words, if you have a loss bear index of 100, that means you can afford the same bundle of goods now as you could in the base period. Now if you have a loss bear index that's above 100, then that'll tell you if you take the loss bear index minus 100, how much you need to increase income to offset inflation or to be able to afford the same bundle of goods now as you could then. So because the Lisbert index uses base period quantities, it tends to overestimate inflation by assuming that prices are still distributed in the same way now as they were then. So the Lisbert index does not take into account fluctuations in quantity across time. Think about it. As the price of something increases, then people tend to purchase less of it. So people are spending less, and this is called a substitution effect. So again, the Lisbert index doesn't take into account that as the price of something increases, people tend to adjust how much they're buying so that they don't have to spend too much more money. So the inflation of the item with the highest quantity in the base period will have the most impact on the index. However, the item with the most inflation will likely have a quantity that changes the most over time. It costs more, so you're buying less. So this index can be problematic because it tends to overestimate inflation. So typically when you're calculating the Lisbert index, you will only have the values for each item's price and the quantity at the base period. So you see those items in the black box. The other values in that table are the calculations that I told you about that will make your life a little bit easier. So for the base period index, let's go ahead and look at that. So if our base period is still 2004, let's go ahead and calculate the Lisbert index for 2004. So the way that you do this, remember, if you look at the formula, take the sum of each item's quantity at the base period times the price at the time of interest, then divide that by the sum of the quantity of each item at the base period times each item's price at the base period. So in this example, I'm using a very simplified example of cost of living, assuming that only gas, food, and electricity are all we need to survive. So just breaking these values down. So in 2004, the average cost for a gallon of gas was $1.90. The average monthly cost of food was $228. And the average cost of electricity was $0.09, or in other words, $0.09 cents per kilowatt hour. The price in 2008 was 380, and then it was 270, and the price of gas was 380 in 2008. Then it was 270 dollars a month for food in 2008, and it was 10 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity in 2008. Then in 2014, the average price of gas was 3 dollars and 40 cents a gallon, 294 dollars a month on food, and 11.5 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity in 2014. The quantity though in 2004, remember the Lisbert index only focuses on the quantity in the base period. So in 2004 we were averaging 300 gallons of gas per year. There's still 12 months in a year because that's what the basis of food, right? This is per month. There's 12 months in a year. And we were using about 13,389 kilowatt hours of electricity on average per person per year. So these are all the values that you have. Now if you're asked to calculate the Lisbert index for 2004, 
then we're basically going to replace each little t in our formula with 2004 and then the little o in our formula is going to be 2004 because o represents the base period the base period is 2004 so we can rewrite this formula as the sum of quantities for each item in 2004 times the price for each item in 2004 divided by the sum of the quantities for each item in 2004 times the price of each item in 2004 and then multiply by 100. So the way that you get the numerator in this case, so the sum of the quantities in 2004 times the price of 2004, for each item you take the quantity at 2004 multiply by the price in 2004 and you get the value for each item. So in 2004, we were averaging 300 gallons of gas per year. That's our quantity in 2004. The price in 2004 was $1.90, so 1 1.9. Multiply that together, you get 570. Moving on to food, 12 months, quantity in 2004. Multiplied by the price in 2004, 228. You get 2,736. Then moving on to electricity, 13,389 kilowatts, that's the quantity in 2004, multiplied by the price in 2004, which was $0.09 dollars or 9 cents, and you get $1,205.01 per year. So what this is saying is that in 2004, people tended to spend about $570 per year on gas, $2,736 per year on food, $1,205.01 on electricity per year in 2004. So you add all those together and we can say if we were just buying gas, food, and electricity, we were spending about $4,511.01 on average on those three things in 2004. Now you take that value and divide by the same value, right? Because we're using 2004, it's going to be the same thing on the numerator and denominator. Multiply by 100, and we have a base period index of 100. So just like the simple index number, the base period index for the Lisbert index is going to be 100. Now let's do one that's a little more challenging. Let's look at 2008. So we rewrite this formula, replacing the zeros with 2004, that's our base period, and the T with 2008, our time period of interest. So now we want to look at the sum for the quantity of items at 2004 times the price for each item in 2008 divided by the quantity of items in 2004 multiplied by the price in 2004. So the denominator is still going to represent how much we were spending at the base period. Now the numerator is going to represent how much we were spending in the time period of interest, assuming that we're still buying the same amount that we did in 2004. So now let's take a look at this last column that we used. So taking each quantity at the year 2004 and multiplying by the price at the time period of interest, which is 2008. So here we've got 300 quantity at of gas in 2004 multiplied by the price of gas in 2008 which averaged three dollars and eighty cents a gallon multiply by th those together and you get one thousand one hundred and forty now let's look at food 12 months quantity in 2004 multiplied by the average price per month of food in 2008 two dollars or two hundred seventy dollars 12 times 270 is three thousand two hundred and forty now let's move on to electricity so we're assuming that our consumption of electricity has not changed since 2004 to 2008. So the quantity is still 13,389 kilowatt hours. The price was 10 cents in 2008. So take the quantity of electricity time in 2004 times the price of electricity in 2008, you get $1,338.90. So you add all these together and you get 5,718.9. So that is what you plug in for the numerator. So assuming that we haven't changed our consumption of gas, food, and electricity from 2004 to 2008, and based on the prices in 2008, we would have spent $5,718.90. Divide that by the price that we would have paid in 2004, multiply it by 100. So 5,718.9 divided by 4,511.01 gives you 1.268 multiply by 100 and you get 126.8.
So in 2008, your income needs to be 126.8% of what it was in 2004 to maintain the same budget for gas, food, and electricity. Or remember, you know, you can take I minus 100 to figure out the percent change. So you could say in 2008, your income needs to be 26.8% higher compared to what it was in 2004 to maintain the same budget for gas, food, and electricity. So now I want you to give it a shot. So I want you to find the Lasper index for 2014 based on the values in the table. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can figure it out. All right, so here are the calculations. So for the numerator, you need to take for each item the quantity at 2004 and multiply it by the price at 2014. So here we've got, remember we're going to look at our numerator here. So the quantity of gas in 2004 was 300 gallons. The price in 2014 was about 340 a gallon, so 3.4. 300 times 3.4 gives you 1,020. So what this is saying is that if our consumption of gas didn't change from 2004 to 2014, then we would have spent $1,020 on gas in 2014. Moving on to food. So there's 12 months in a year. That hasn't changed. And the price of food per month in 2014 averaged $294. So we would have spent about $3,528 in 2014 on average on food. Now, moving on to electricity. The price of electricity has increased from, you know, 0.09 to, you know, 11.5 cents. So we take the amount of gas, the quantity of gas used in 2004, which was 13,389 kilowatt hours, multiply that by the price of gas in per kilowatt hour in 2014, you get $1,539.74. You add these three values together, you get $6,087.74 is what we would have spent in 2014 on gas, food, and electricity on average per person, assuming that we're still using the same amount that we did in 2004. So now you plug this value in to the numerator of your equation, and then you plug in the value based on the base period prices into the denominator, and you get 6,087.74 divided by 4,511.01. When you divide there, you get 1.350, multiply by 100, and you get 135. So what this says is that in 2014, your income needs to be 135% of what it was in 2004 to maintain the same budget for gas, food, and electricity. Or in other words, you need to be making 35% more in 2014 than you did in 2004 to keep up with inflation based on these items. So just like the simple index, typically when you're looking at this data, in the real world, you aren't going to have access to the actual values, so the actual price of goods. So what you need to use is the Lasper's index to assess inflation across time. So just as before, if you want to compare index numbers and one of those index numbers doesn't come from the base period, you can take the later index minus the earlier index and divide by the earlier index and multiply by 100. So if we're trying to compare 2008 to 2014, then our later index comes from 2014. So that Lasper index was 135. And then our earlier index from 2008 was 126.8. So you see that there. So if we take 135 minus 126.8, we get 8.2. Divide by 126.8, you get 0 0.065. Then multiply that by 100 and you get 6.5. So now we can say, if your income did not increase by at least 6.5% between 2008 and 2014, your income failed to keep up with inflation of gas, food, and electricity. So that's how you could compare index numbers when you're not using the base period. And notice here, when you use this formula, it automatically gives you the difference. You don't have to subtract by 100 to figure out what the difference is. 
So here is a sample of the Lesperes index in the real world. So this actually came from the consumer price index for all urban consumers as reported by, I think the Bureau of Labor Statistics is where I got this. So, and this was from July of 2014. So if you look here, it tells you that the base period is 1982 to 1984. So that's what all these numbers are compared to. And I'm just gonna kind of break these down for you. So I just looked at rent, electricity, and utility, and water and sewage maintenance, because I just didn't want to include every single thing. They have like three or four pages of items that are used to calculate the cost of living. So if we look at this, we can see that in July 2014, this guy right here, the price of rent was 276.73% of the price of rent in 1982 to 1984. Or if you subtract 100 for that, you can say that the price of rent increased by 176.73% from 1982 to 1984 to 2014. It's quite a bit. It's almost more than, it's almost, what, that'd be triple, because if it's 100%, it'd be double. Yeah, that's a lot. It's scary. All right, the mean monthly rent from 1982 to 1984 was $350. So based on that and the index numbers, what is the mean monthly rent in July 2014? Well, remember this formula before. To find the value at the time of interest, you take the value at the base period, in this case, 350, and you multiply that by the index number for the time period of interest. So in this case, for 2014, that would be this 276.73 rent in t July 2014 and divide that by 100. So we have 350, the monthly rent, the value at the base period, multiply by the index number at the time period of interest, 276.73 divided by 100. This becomes 350 times 2.7673. Well, let me go ahead and um, change that because I want you to round to the thousands place. All right, all better. I'm rounding to the thousands place now. So you can see, based on the monthly rent between 1982 and 1984, and the index number for 2014, you know that now the mean monthly rent in 2014, July 2014, that is, is $968.45. Now, if you scooch back a little bit in this lecture, you can see how rounding can really change your value. So make sure that you're rounding like I am so that we all come up with the same answers. So now I want you to give this a shot on your own. So answer those questions below based on the price of electricity in 20, or July 2014 compared to the price of electricity in 1982 to 1984. So go ahead and pause this video and try this on your own. So now let's take a look at the answers for those. So in July 2014, the price of electricity was 208.42% of the price of electricity in 1982-1984. That interpretation isn't really comfortable for me. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I like to think about it in terms of how much did it change, not just how much of it was there. I don't know. I like this one better. So you just take 208.42, subtract 100, and we know that the price of electricity increased by 108.42% from 1982 to 1984 to 2014. So now let's see, based on the index number for electricity in July 2014 and the price of electricity per month in 1982-1984, what is the mean monthly price of electricity in July 2014? So you just plug in the value at the base period, which is $61.56 for YO. Then for I subscript T, you plug in the index number for the time period of interest. So 208.42, and then you leave your 100 there. So then this becomes 61.56, that stays the same, and then you solve for 208.42 divided by 100, so multiply by 2.084, remember round to the thousands place, and you get 128.291, or about $128.29 would be the monthly price of electricity in 2014, July 2014. So now let's look at the PASH index. And I have it spelled out phonetically for you here because this is difficult for us to say. We aren't French after all. Okay, 
So the PASH index is kind of like the Lisper index. We're looking at you know multiple items across time that have varying quantities. But now the prices are based on the current level or the current weight degree or quantity of usage. So the quantity that we're going to focus on is the quantity in the time period of interest. And you can see that reflected in the formula here. So what the PASH index does is it helps give us an idea of what today's basket would have cost at yesterday's prices. And a PASH index of 100 means that the price of the bundle of items in the time period of interest is equivalent to the base period. Or in other words, if you have a PASH index of 100, that means that you can afford the same bundle of goods in the base period as you can now. So because the PASH index uses current period, current time period quantities, it tends to underestimate inflation by assuming that prices are distributed in the same way. It also reflects some of the changes in consumption patterns that occur when consumers respond to price increases. So it helps account for the fact that increased consumption of goods will indicate reduced relative prices. So the PASH index is a little bit less useful and a lot less common because we aren't really, we're more interested in knowing if we can afford now what we could then instead of could we afford then what we can now. We're more interested in what's going on today but I'll show you the PASH index. All right, so the calculations for this are a little more intense because you have to consider quantities at the time period of interest. So if we're looking at the PASH index and the calculations for that, typically what you'll have available to you will be the prices and the quantities. All right, so let's look at this. If we're looking at the PASH index for 2004, well, we replace T with 2004, that's our time period of interest, and our base period is still 2004, so we replace O with 2004. So you'll see the formula written here based on now we're looking at 2004. So in this example, we don't need this quantity of 2008 because we're only looking at 2004 but I included it anyways, because you need to be able to look at information and decide what's actually important to your calculations. So here we've got, so the quantity at 2004 was 1.90. The price in 2004 was 300, so you'll see that here. Quantity of food in 2004 was 12 months. The price, 228 a month. Multiply that together, you see that here. Then the quantity of electricity in 2004 was 13,389 kilowatt hours per year multiplied by the price per kilowatt hour in 2004 and you end up with the same value here that you actually did for the Lisper index when we were thinking about 2004. So when you figure this out again your base period index is 100. So no matter what index you're calculating the index for the base period will be 100. Now let's go ahead and look at our calculations if we were considering 2008. So here we need to know the quantity in 2008, the price in 2008, the quantity in 2008, and the price in 2004. So when we're doing these calculations, the quantity in 2008, 290 gallons per year of gas, the price in 2008, was 3.80. Then moving down here, the quantity of food, or quantity of months really, in 2008 was 12 months a year. Price of food was 270, so you'll see that there. Do that multiplication. Then for electricity, the quantity in 2008 was 14,000 kilowatt hours per year. Multiply by the price of electricity per kilowatt hour in 2008, 0.10, and you get 1,400. Add those together, and this tells you what you spent on gas, food, and electricity on average per person in 2008. And that's the numerator here. Now to find the denominator, we need to take the quantity in 2008, time period of interest, multiply it by the price in 2004, the base period. So now, Quantity is still the same, so you'll see these quantities are the same, right? Because we're thinking about the quantity at the time period of interest for both the numerator and denominator. But now the prices are different. So in 2004, gas was $1.90, food was $2.28 per month, and electricity was 
nine cents per kilowatt hour. So when you take each quantity for each item in 2008, multiply by its respective price, and then add those together, getting at this part here, you get $4,547. So when you plug those values into your equation, you get 5,742 divided by 4,547 gives you 1.263. Multiply that by 100, you get 126.3. So what this tells us, in 2004, your income would have needed to be 126.3% or 26.3% higher to afford the 2008 budget for gas, food, and electricity. So I'll say that again. In 2004, your income would have needed to be 126.3% of what it was to afford the 2008 budget for gas, food, and electricity. To put it even more simply, you needed to make 26.83% more of your income in 2008 to afford what you can or in 2004 to afford what you can in 2008. See how that interpretation isn't as useful as the one for the Lisper index, because we're not going to go back in time and see what we can afford. Go ahead and figure out the PASH index for 2014 using the formulas that I just showed you. So pause this video, give it a try, and then I'll show you the answers next. So now let's look at the answers for this one. So now we are looking at 2014, and I left the 2004 quantity in there just to test you. So remember, with the PASH index, you only care about the quantity at the time of interest, as opposed to the Lisper index that we did earlier, where you only care about the base period quantities. So if 2004 is our time period of interest, the only quantity that we care about is for 2014. All right, so let's walk through these calculations. So Replace the T's in your formula with the time period of interest, 2014, and then the O with the base period, 2004. So we're looking at the sum of the quantity of items at the time period times the price in the time period. So that's what we have here, right? So we had 280 gallons of gas in 2014 times the price, which was 340 in 2014, so $952 in gas. 12 months in 2014 times the price of food in 2014, which was $294, $3,258 in food. Quantity in 2014 of electricity, 15,200 kilowatts per year, times the price of electricity in 2014, 11.5 11.5 cents. You get $1,748 in electricity. Add those up. And $5,958 was roughly what the average person spent in 2014 on gas, food, and electricity. Now let's move on to what we need for the denominator, right? The price, or the quantity at 2014 for each item times the price in 2004 of each item. So we have 280 was the quantity in 2014. Price of gas in 2004 was $1.90, so 1 1.9. You get $532 in gas. Then 12 months times $228 in 2004 for food per month, $2,736 for food. Then electricity, we used about $15,200 in 2014. Price in 2004 was 0.09 or 9 cents. You get 1,368. So if we were using the same amount in 2004 that we are now, we would have spent $4,636. So that's our denominator. So then we take the quant each quantity times each price in 2014 divided by each quantity in 2014 by each price in 2004. And so we get 5,958 divided by 4,636. That's 1.285. Multiply by 100, you get 128.5. So what this says is in 2004, your income would have needed to be 128.5% of what it was to afford the 2014 budget for gas, food, and electricity. So in 2014, or sorry, in 2004, your income would have needed to be 28.5% higher to travel ahead in time and afford gas, food, and electricity in 2014.
Now the reason that I show you the patch index, even though it is a little bit more tricky to calculate and it isn't really something that most people are interested in looking at, is because it is used for the Fisher Index. And the Fisher Index is really nice because it kind of finds a middle ground between the Lesper and the Pash Index. So remember, the Lesper Index tends to overestimate inflation, and the Pash Index tends to underestimate inflation. So the Fisher Index combines this over and underestimate of inflation to find this middle ground that is a more accurate measure. So just like before, the index number for the base period even for the Fisher Index, is 100. So you take the Lesper Index, multiply it by the Pash Index for the time period of interest, and then find the square root of that. So the Lesper Index for 2004 was 100. The Pash Index for 2004 was 100. Multiply those together, you get 10,000. Square root of 10,000 is 100. So for 2008, the Lesper Index was 126.8, so a slight overestimation of inflation. And the PASH index for 2008 was 126.3, so that's slight underestimation of inflation. You multiply those two guys together, you get 16,014.84, find the square root, and you get 126.550. So that's the Fisher index. Go ahead and find the Fisher index for 2014 based on the Lesper index and the PASH index that you calculated earlier. So pause this video, give it a try. All right, so there's your answer. The Lesper Index for 2014 was 135. The Pash Index for 2014 was 128.5. Multiply by those together, then take the square root, and you get a value that's right in between the two. A nice middle ground between the overestimate of the Lesper Index and the underestimate of the Pash Index. Now the Fisher Index is going to be used to calculate deflation. So deflation is basically, you just want to compare values at different times while controlling for inflation. So for example, $20 will buy less retail output today than it did 20 years ago. But for data collectors, a $20 purchase gets added to total sales in the same manner today as it did 20 years ago, even though it represents a different quantity of goods. So separating out the inflation effect leaves researchers with a clearer picture of what's really happening to sales levels relative to any time period. So the object then becomes to remove any part of the variable's change that's attributed to price movements instead of actual increases in sales so that you can arrive at a real inflation-adjusted indicator. So using deflation formula, you can ask yourself, are your sales num numbers increasing? But are they keeping, so if, even if your sales numbers are increasing, you can figure out if they're keeping up with inflation. Now the example that I'm about to show you is actually based on a real example of my dear old dad who ha is on a fixed income from workers' comp. So you could use the deflation formula to figure out if your income is fixed, how much spending power will you have in 20 years compared to now, for example, or at any time period compared to when you started getting that income. So the deflation formula takes the value at the time of interest divided by the index number for the time of interest and then multiply that by 100. Now the index number can be the Lesper index. It could also be the Fisher index. I'm going to use the Fisher index because remember it's that middle ground between Lesper and Pash. So typically deflation is used with either Fisher or Lesper, not as often with the Pash index. So here's my dad. He was a welder for 20 years. He herniated two discs in his spine at work, and they placed him on a worker's compensation disability in 2004. His yearly income was fixed at 18000 which was a fraction of what he was making. But anyway, 18000 per year, and there are no cost of living increases for worker's compensation. So based on the Fisher Index, which tells you a nice measure of inflation across time, what kind of spending power does my dad have now with that $18,000 income compared to what he had in 2004? So if you plug in the value at 2004, which is, or sorry, the value at 2008, which is 18,000, because remember it hasn't changed since 2004, and then the index number for 2008, which remember we found Fisher's index to be 126.550, so his income divided by his index, 
for that time period, multiply by 100. So 18,000 divided by 126.550 gives you 142.236. Multiply that by 100, you get $14,203.60. So let's think about what this means. So what this means is basically his income was worth $18,000 in 2004. Well, now that same income is only worth $14,223 in 2008. So that's pretty drastic. His spending power has decreased by nearly $4,000 from 2004 to 2008 because no cost of living increase for workers' compensation. So now go ahead and figure out what would Dean's income be from 2004 adjusted to $2,014 based on the Fisher's Index for 2014 that you calculated previously. So once you do those calculations, you can see that in 2014, that income is only worth $13,666.40 in 2004 dollars. So that spending power has decreased quite a bit from what he was able to afford in 2004 compared to now what he's able to afford in 2014. So I hate to leave you on a depressing note, but <laughs> there's the deflation formula. And I hope that this lecture helped you understand how to interpret index numbers and how to think about inflation and how it changes the cost of living across time.